This guy invents invisibility powers and uses it to spy on his co-workers. And recreate Among Us. Sus. A rat runs to a cage and immediately gets trapped. What are you gonna do, little rat? How will you get away? Uh-oh. Little Shredder doesn't get any more screen time. He gets eaten by an invisible monster. Okay, here's our main hero. We can see by the size of his head, he's a genius. The big head devours Twinkies with coffee and programs some biological stuff. Science. Apparently, he's in the middle of some scientific puzzle, but the girl next door keeps distracting him. Alas, the curtains come down. Darn. It seems this has stimulated his circulation and it gave his brain just what he needed. A eureka moment. He solves the mystery, stabilizing the biological thing. Immediately, he calls his colleague to share the good news. The genius's name is Sebastian, and it looks like his colleague, Linda, is also his ex-girlfriend. Looks like Sebastian and his team have been trying to crack something called reversion for 11 months and have finally solved the puzzle. But come on, 11 months? I've seen people speedrunning Spore in an hour. It's basically the same thing. Excited, Linda wakes up her new boyfriend, Matt, who's also her colleague and works in a team with Sebastian. Who doesn't know about their relationship yet? Sebastian rushes to his lab in his Porsche. Yep, these scientists get paid well. Sebastian enters his lab with voice authorization. We see a zoo. There are different animals and some seem to be invisible. Oh, so that's what they're working on. Invisibility. We see Matt giving medicine to Isabel, an invisible gorilla that is still a bit dizzy after eating Shredder. That's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference if you didn't understand. Matt puts on his thermal glasses and enters the cage and gets bitten. There's no way that gorilla wouldn't tear him limb from limb. Just as Joe Rogan. The gorilla gets out and it's Planet of the Apes time. The question is, if apes take over the world and no one sees them, did it really happen? Matt goes on a chase and slams into Sebastian, who immediately starts teasing him. Ten bucks say I nail her first. Is this about Linda? Oh, you mean the gorilla. Challenge accepted. They chase it down and start shooting away with tranquilizers, but Matt misses from like two feet away. Skill issue. Using his aimbot, Sebastian wins easily. Matt promises to give him those 10 bucks later. But we all know those people never pay up. We meet Sarah, the best vet in the state, who for some reason is against scientific tests on animals. Meanwhile, Sebastian tries to find out who's the boyfriend of her ex, but Linda keeps it private. Okay, less romance, more science. We meet the other team members ready for some action. The plan? Make the gorilla visible again. That's the whole reversion thing they were talking about. Apparently it's easy to make something invisible, but not the reverse. Luckily, our brainiac here just solved the mystery. After injecting Isabel, we see the formula spreading through the gorilla's body, and everything seems normal. Slowly, it becomes visible again. But then, ouch, it starts hurting bad. They begin defibrillating Isabel. And yes, it works. Finally, those organs were looking pretty gross. Are you telling me we all look like that underneath? The team looks happy for Isabel, who becomes much more peaceful. But Sebastian wants to slice the monkey's brain out as soon as possible. You gotta collect the data. This triggers Sarah, but then they all party and everything's fine. As the team celebrates, Sebastian sulks alone. Linda asks him what's wrong, and he explains that he needs to chase after something. Now that the big mystery is solved, he already is bored. You know what you need? A girlfriend. No, not your ex one. Come on, man. There's so many fish in the sea. Sebastian is smooth, but Linda refuses to travel on that old road again. Sadly, Sebastian retreats to his animal farm to get some invisible dog love. If no one saw it, it never happened. Just kidding. He pets the dog and wonders to himself what it's like to be invisible. Foreshadowing moment. The scientists arrive at the Pentagon to report on their success, but Sebastian decides to hide the fact his reversion breakthrough worked. The Pentagon staff look demoralized. What do we give you tax money for? We need results as soon as possible. Or no more Porsche for you. Seems like Sebastian here has got another plan. He's scared that the Pentagon will take over now that the project is a success. He decides he wants to take the experiment to phase three all on his own. That's right, human trials. At least Sarah will be happy. No more animal testing. But Matt and Linda aren't impressed. They argue, talking about rules and stuff. Procedures, schmocedures. Who cares about them? Sebastian believes that he's a scientific rock star and he wants to change the world. They buy into it and the trio speeds off. At the lab, the nerdy trio lies to the rest of the team that their human test is all legal. Sure, Sebastian volunteered for it. When the team realizes that this is their chance to get rid of Sebastian, they seem okay with it. Okay, let's make our doc invisible. The next day, they begin. His colleagues remind him that it's not too late to stop, but our boy is dedicated to dying in the name of science. The alpha Sebastian puts on his birthday suit and hops onto the table. Meanwhile, the team decides who gets his Porsche when the chief becomes a casualty. Slowly, they inject invisibility juice and the process begins. A little itchy in the arm, in the back. Whoa, that escalated quickly. Doc is in severe pain. He's moments away from getting a seizure. His pulse bumps up and the heart dances the last tango. But Sebastian takes it like a man and things start to stabilize. Abracadabra. Now he's invisible. Let's celebrate. But first, we gotta wait for Sebastian to get out of his coma. 
17 hours later and Sebastian wakes up. He immediately asks them to turn the lights off. His eyelids are transparent, so he literally can't close his eyes. Wait a second, if all light passed through you, wouldn't your eyes stop working and you'd be blind? Can someone with a 200 IQ explain please? Anyway, Sebastian starts playing Marco Polo with his team. It's okay though, they've got thermal glasses and cameras to follow his movement. It's nighttime and the team goes for a rest. Everyone except for Sarah, who's on the night shift, watching our lab mouse Sebastian. Sarah drinks some coffee and then immediately goes to sleep. I don't think that's how that works. But Sebastian is now awake. What would you do if you were invisible? He decides to visit Sarah and do some scientific research. Suddenly, Sarah awakens, and she has no idea what happened. The door to her room is open, and Sneaky Pete is not in his bed. Then boom, Sneaky Pete is back. Looks like he still has to work on his stealth, but it's enough to confuse Sarah. The next day, she tells her story to the team. Everyone's a little suspicious, but not quite enough yet. Later, we catch Sebastian getting a little flirty with Sarah once more. Meanwhile, Janice goes to the lady's room, but it seems like she's not alone. She checks things out with her glasses, and it seems like she is. God forbid there's an invisible monkey in the toilet. You never know. Seems like everyone's already nervous about our invisible buddy. Indeed, it's uncomfortable having Dr. Perv around. But he's loving every second of it, even eavesdropping on their conversations. Now, time to mess around with Linda. First, we do the cola can trick. Then, he moves in. This man has no game. Finally, we get to the day when it's time to make Sebastian visible again. The injection hits hard. Man can't breathe. The team tries to incubate him, but he goes berserk and kicks everyone around. Now, he's even lost his pulse. They're losing him. Matt starts doing CPR, but before he can kiss him, Sebastian comes back. And then, gone again. Back to invisible. Later, he recovers and Lyndon tells him he almost died. But then he quotes the great Kanye West. Whatever doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. Then, he gets some new drip. A mask and some sunglasses. Looking pretty fly. Is it just me, or does he look like Deadpool? Ten days later, the situation gets tense. Sebastian goes through some painful tests and they still can't figure out why he didn't become visible. One day during a night shift, Greg enjoys some pre-internet entertainment. Meanwhile, Sebastian gets extremely tired of sitting in a lab for so long. Not sure what the problem is, I haven't left my house since quarantine. Wait, you can go back outside? Oh. Anyway, Sebastian decides quarantine is not for him and goes for a walk outside. At least he has his own mask, but this is totally against the rules. If someone spots him, it's the end of the whole project. Luckily, he remembers that he's literally invisible and also gets to make the rules and proceeds to do whatever he wants. Greg immediately calls the team. It's time for a hunt. Usually my boss is the one hunting me down. I poop slow. Sue me. Meanwhile, Sebastian is enjoying his freedom and his borscht while scaring kids on the road. He gets back home and grabs some Twinkies. Suddenly, he spots his neighbor. Uh-oh. Sebastian takes off his mask and goes full beast mode. He rings the girl's door. She looks through the peephole, but of course can't see anyone. I'm invisible around the girls I like too. He rings the bell again and the girl steps outside. He seizes the moment and sneaks right in. Inside, he pulls the ultimate prank. He moves her mirror up. Epic prank. Unfortunately, we'll have to cut back to Linda. She gets to his home and sees he's taken his mask off and is somewhere else. This can't be good. The team gets their tranquilizers to hunt down the dock and they're super excited. Oh darn, he's back. Fun ruined. The team is livid at Sebastian, but he reminds everyone that he's the boss. I wonder if it's more or less intimidating to know he's in his birthday suit. That must count as workplace harassment. Linda promises to go to the Pentagon if he tries this again, but he thinks she's bluffing, because it would risk her career too. Because Linda said this, Sarah realizes that the whole project is Sebastian's idea and that the Pentagon isn't even aware of what they're doing. Then, the team wonders if being invisible for too long has affected his mind. Later, while doing some tests, Greg asks Sebastian if he did anything worth talking about. You know, pervs can recognize each other. He shares that he did indeed scare one girl, but he also liked it. Which is one way to deal with rejection, I guess. Greg is impressed and thinks it's super cool. At night, Linda awakens from a nightmare, probably about Sebastian and his creepy ways. Then, she gets a call. It's Matt. He found the way to reverse invisibility. Finally, the team gathers at the lab again. The stability meter keeps going up, but once it hits 95, it breaks down. Sorry, Sebastian. You'll remain hollow for a little while longer. He rages on Matt for being such a noob, but he's probably just jealous that he almost solved it. Later, Sebastian complains to Linda about his invisibility. He hates the fact that he can't use it and believes it to be a gift. I don't know, so far he's been pretty lame with it. At least rob a bank. Sebastian goes back to his bed and then suddenly realizes something. The camera. Why don't I just hack it? That's what scientists in movies usually do, right? Sebastian heads out and we see he's leveled up his sneak ability. He bungs this hobo and then climbs up this apartment. Looks like it's Linda's. He sees Matt in there. Uh-oh. Your ex with your biggest rival. What you gonna do? Throw a brick in their window, of course. Linda immediately calls Frank to see if Sebastian is still in the lab. Affirmative. <laughs> they don't know what we know. What they need to do is just cover the floor in flour. That ought to solve things. 
Meanwhile, Sebastian is back in the lab, extremely mad and jelly. So much so that this barking dog gets on his nerves. So, he sends it to the farm. Can this guy get any more pathetic? Looks like he's about to set the record. I don't think even James Cameron can raise the bar for how low he's let things sink. You get it because the Titanic? <laughs> The next morning, Sarah finds that the pup has passed on and immediately approaches Sebastian. He denies everything in his usual polite way. Nighttime strikes once more, which means it's peaking time. At her home, Linda can sense his presence, so she throws a blanket to see if he's there. Smart move. Something was indeed there for a moment, so she rushes to the lab. Those cameras won't fool her. She checks for Sebastian and confirms that he's indeed gone. Then she spots his hacking tools. Very cool. The team gathers up and decides it's time to turn themselves into the Pentagon. Matt and Linda take a ride to the project manager. He's very angry and fires them immediately. As he's about to call all the generals, the telephone line is cut. He goes outside and we can see that Sebastian is looking on from a distance. Suddenly, he greets the man and takes him for a swim. The fight lasts mere moments and in the end, he's drowned. The following day, everyone's in the lab. Linda has yet to hear back from the Pentagon and she's nervous. She calls in and finds out he swam to death. She tries to reach out to the other generals, but the line is cut. Linda and Matt try to go outside, but the elevator doesn't recognize their codes. Stupid machines. They try a few more times, but then realize something's up. The team hacks into the system, what is it with scientists and hacking, and realize they're trapped, and Sebastian is the one who did it. Among Us moment. I think I never actually played the game. The team gear up and get to hunting. As for Janice, she gets left behind. Too bad for her. One down, many more to go. The team can't find Sebastian. They call him on a lab line asking him to stop, but he's gone far too deep. He confirms that he killed the manager guy and now he'll get rid of anyone who tries to stop him. The freedom of invisibility is just too tempting. The team wonders where Janice went. Wasn't she right behind them? Uh oh, she's gone. It appears she's died due to death. The team starts to argue with one another, but then realizes they need to band together to fight or else the invisible dude is going to make them disappear. The team activates motion detectors and finds Sebastian sneaking in some quarters. The boys load up their tranquilizers and go hunting. But where is he? Behind the pipes. Matt shoots, but no, it's just a vent. Surprise, Greg gets choked. Kinky. Matt shows his incredible shooting skills again, as he shoots everything except Sebastian. At least he makes him let go of Greg. Oh, okay. Matt proceeds to shoot down some heat pipes, but then gets thrown by Sebastian. Now there's warm air all over the place and he can't detect Sebastian. To make matters worse, he's out of bullets. Not that that matters with the aim of a stormtrooper. Nonetheless, he's ready for some one-on-one -on -one action. He looks pretty tough, but can he win against what is essentially a shadow? I always run scared from mine. Matt takes a fire extinguisher to spawn Sebastian while the latter sneaks around. Sebastian pulls ahead in battle, but luckily Linda saves him right on time. Meanwhile, Sarah and Frank tend to Greg, who's bleeding out. So Sarah runs to get some blood. Frank believes it's a bad idea to split up, but Sarah hasn't seen many horror movies. And at this point, wants to leave this one. It looks like she's about to be next, but then she gets a bright idea. She starts spilling the bags of blood everywhere to see Sebastian. Unfortunately, he was behind her the entire time. He slams into her and gets some blood spilt on him, but it's no matter. He's too strong and shoots her with the tranquilizer, then gives her a chiropractic adjustment. Snippity snap. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Matt and Linda find Frank and see Greg dying. Well, at least they're all together now. But that doesn't help much as Frank gets stabbed from behind with the crowbar. Turns out we were watching Half-Life 3 all along. Sebastian manages to get Matt too, heavily wounding him. Then, he locks Linda and Matt in the fridge and changes the temperature to negative 30. That's a cold-hearted way to do him in. The resourceful Linda manages to stitch Matt's wound, while Sebastian gets his mask and clothes on. I'm surprised he's not the one freezing to death with all that ice-cold drip. Before leaving the lab, he decides to make some makeshift explosives. Meanwhile, Matt falls unconscious and Linda is in shock. But it's no time for frozen tears. It's time to keep a cool head. <laughs> I'm sorry. Linda goes into Brainiac mode and constructs an electromagnet. She uses it to undo the lock. Big brain moment. She better hurry up since Sebastian's about to blow the whole place up. He's like me when I discovered proximity mines on Goldeneye. Linda manages to open the door. Nicely done. She gets a flamethrower and meets up with Sebastian at the elevator. How about some barbecue? Linda burns him to a crisp. I wonder how he's still moving. Uh oh, he's gone again. Linda triggers the sprinklers and sees that he's right behind her. How is he okay right now? Like his whole body should be on fire and now it's all wet. This doesn't make any sense. A brutal fight begins and Linda's losing it. But not so fast. Matt is here. Back from the dead. He slams Sebastian with the crowbar. And then just walks away. Come on man. Finish him. Sebastian gets up and goes for revenge. But then gets electrocuted. He was well done before and now he's definitely deep fried. With that dealt with, Linda and Matt find the bomb but it's too late. They head for the elevator and climb up the shaft. As they're climbing, the bomb explodes. Uh oh. The elevator is flying up, and it almost smashes them. Okay, we're in the clear now. Oh wait, it's coming back down. 
They barely escape getting chopped and proceed to exit. However, a few stairs up and boom, it's Sebastian. He grabs Linda's leg and tries to get her down. How does he keep surviving these things? He manages to throw Linda down onto the elevator. He insists for one last kiss, for old time's sake. Linda obliges, but uses the moment to unplug the elevator and throw Sebastian down. Okay, no way he's surviving this one. Matt and Linda survive and get out of the lab. Pretty good ending. Now it's off to a romantic getaway to military prison. Moral of the story? Among Us.